Are you awake? I said, are you awake? Then praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for what He's doing. His mercy, His power will never stop in our lives in Jesus' name. You put joy in your heart. Laughter in your mouth. And all the miracles you need, He'll grant unto you in Jesus' name. We're going to have this uh, final session tonight. And it's as important as the first one. And God is going to touch, transform, turn around every life in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I will thank you and worship you and bless your name. We're asking, Lord, that tonight you minister more to your people in Jesus' name. Be glorified in every life. Let the name of Jesus work wonders in every life in Jesus' name. We we'll pray, Lord, that all that your people have been asking you, they have been seeking your face for. We we'll pray that you will do it miraculously, instantaneously, in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We we'll pray that no one will go away from your presence. Or disappointment in Jesus' name. Fulfill your word. Fulfill your will. Do wonders in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. We're looking at a passage of scripture in Daniel. Chapter 11. Verse 32. Daniel 11. 32 And such as do wickedly Shall he corrupt By flatteries But The people that do know their God Shall be strong And do exploits He's talking about a terrible time, a difficult time. The time is still future, actually. There is a time that is referred to as the time of the Great Tribulation. At that time, the Antichrist will trouble and torment the people that do not know the Lord. Then it says, at such a time, when the evil one will almost be reigning without any restriction in different parts of the world and it will corrupt particularly the nation of Israel by flatteries it says at such a time the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits let's bring it to our own time there are times that people are living in communities, in places and situations where it appears those who are opposed to Christ, opposed to God, opposed to righteousness, opposed to the light, opposed to the truth, it's like they are having a free day and they are able to do whatever it is, torturing people, tormenting people, troubling people. And it says, at such a time, when people are living in communities that pose great challenges to their lives, in communities when opposition, hatred, hindrance, affliction runs free without any hindrance, it says, at such a time, the people that do know their God, they will not be swallowed up in the evil of the day. Neither will they be overcome or conquered by the evil of the day. Because it says, the people that do know their God, they will be strong. And they will do exploits. It teaches us something. That the knowledge of the Lord, when you know the Lord, it makes you strong. When you know that God... 
is a mighty God, is a powerful God, is a God of all impossibilities. It says the people that know God intimately like that, they will derive strength from that knowledge of the Lord. And then the knowledge will not just be theoretical, they will do exploits. And I pray that as you listen to these words of God over and over, you will know God more. And then the knowledge of the Lord will produce strength and might and courage, miracle working power in your life. I want to talk to you on the exploits of God's favored people. The exploits of God's favored people. The exploits of God's favored people. Three points we're going to consider. Number one, deliverance through God's miracle working power. Deliverance through God's miracle working power. When you know that power, that that power cannot fail. When you know that power, and you're willing to rest all your weight on that power. When you know that power, and you're willing to trust that power implicitly, without doubting or wavering, then that miracle working power will work, must work in your life. It will work in Jesus' name. Deliverance through God's miracle working power. Number two, the declaration in God's miracle working promises. The promises of God produce miracle. And there are declarations in those promises. When you take those declarations out of the promises and then you internalize them and then you bring them out and you say what God says. You don't say what your mind is saying. You don't say what your feeling is saying. You don't say what the surrounding is saying. You don't say what society is saying. You don't say what whoever is saying. You say what God says. You declare what God is declaring. The decision to do that in your life, I will only say what God has said without contradiction. I will not contradict the will of God, the word of God, the mind of God, the revelation of God. When you make up your mind, I will say what he has said. Miracles will take place in your life. Wake me up with an amen. The declaration in God's miracle working promises. Number three, the dominion of God's miracle working people. The dominion of God's miracle working people. We are the people and we have dominion. I have dominion. I said I have dominion. The people of God will work miracles when they understand what the Lord has said about them and they take hold of the promises of God, what he has said about them, and they stand firm and stand fast on what the Lord had said about them, will become God's miracle working people, and we have dominion. Number one, deliverance. Number two, declaration. Number three, dominion. Number one, the deliverance through God's miracle working power. We're looking at Exodus chapter 14. Exodus chapter 14. And I'm reading here from verse 13. Exodus chapter 14. Reading from verse 13. In verse 13 it says, And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not. And that same word is still alive today, Fear ye not. You will not fear. I said you will not fear. In the day, in the night, in the deep, in the height, in the dark, in the light, 
with people or without people, before people or behind people, all alone by yourself or with Egyptians running after you, you will not fear in Jesus' name. Fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. There are times all you need to do is stand still. All you need to do is stand still and see those Egyptians drowned. All you need to do is stand still and see all those Assyrians in one night all destroyed. All you need to do is stand still and see that mighty herald smitten by an angel and then it dies immediately. Sometimes all you need to do is stand still and see the accusing hand pointed at you drying up. Sometimes all you need to do is stand still and Moses said, fear ye not. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today ye shall see them again no more forever. For the sicknesses which you have seen today, ye shall see them no more forever. For the affliction, the torment, the yoke, the curse, and all the works and all the plans of the devil that you have seen bombarding your life, crowding your life, that you have seen today, you will see them no more forever. Because all the happiness that have been sorrow, anxiety in your heart, in your life, up till this present moment that you have seen up till today, you will see them no more forever. I congratulate you. There is going to be a final separation between you and the Egyptians tonight. You know, they had come out of Egypt, but there was no gulf between them and the Egyptians. The Egyptians still had the kind of a plan to run after them and to destroy them. But a miracle took place that night. The Lord said, Moses, why are you praying to me? You prayed enough. Take action. What do I do, Lord? Tell the people, it's good, it's too still at that time, but now it is time to move. I said, it is time to move. Where are we moving to? The Red Sea is in front of us and the Egyptians are behind us and there are mountains on both sides and the Lord said, stretch forth your rod and the Red Sea will part. We're going over. You know, this Red Sea before you that looks like an impossible ocean, impossible sea, impossible river, it will be divided. And then he stretched his rod, and the sea parted into two. And they walked on and walked on, and the Lord suspended that Red Sea until the youngest, until the least, until the weakest, until the child, everyone in Israel, until everyone passed over. And then the Egyptians. The Egyptians did not know, and they still wanted to run after the children of Israel. Their end was about to come. The end of those sicknesses about to come in your life. The end of those calamities about to come in your life. The end of the yoke and the curse about to come in your life. And then they were inside there, and then God said... Moses stretched the rod again. He stretched the rod and the river came on them and they all drowned. Now, that's not the only thing. Egypt, those who remained at home, they were still over there. And then the people of Israel, they were over here and the Red Sea now divided them. When the sea came back, the Red Sea was then God's sign. And God's symbol that Israel will not go back to Egypt again and Egypt will not come over to Israel. A Red Sea will divide between you and your enemy. 
a point comes in your life a point comes in your experience that all the things that chased you until this day god brings a red sea between you and those evil powers will never be able to come over to your side anymore in jesus name deliverance through god's miracle working power it has happened already it will keep on happening point number two now the declaration in god's miracle working promises the declaration in god's miracle working promise brothers and sisters you know there are people who have been christians for many many years and they do not understand they, they think when we're in church we read the bible we speak the bible we pray with the bible we teach the bible we declare the bible we preach the word of god once we're out of church out of worship now we're going back home we use our normal ordinary language what if you could just live your life and you say only things that are in agreement with the revelation of god for your life even when you are sick accidentally sick because you should not be sick really but accidentally sick you will not speak the language of sickness you declare what the lord has said your son come out of that sickness it will not take root in your life in jesus name that's why we're talking about the declaration in god's miracle working promises basically what we're saying is this make a decision in your life i will say only what he has said i will alter pronounce only what he has said i will not allow satan to push me to say what satan is saying i will not allow men or women to kind of stir me up to say what they want me to say the words of men the words of women I will not repeat the words of my enemy. I will only say what he has said. Let me show you what I mean. Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. I'm reading from verse 5 and then I'm reading from verse 6. And you're going to look at two things. One in verse 5, one in verse 6. Look at verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content satisfied with such things as she have for he has said this God talking now he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee remember that for he has said I will never leave thee nor forsake thee when we hear that from the word of God and then we're out of the service, out of the worship and then we face a particular challenge and we forget what he has said. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee and we say, I am abandoned. I am rejected. That's not what he said. Because he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm alone. I'm left all to myself. Nobody loves me. Nobody cares for me. I'm unfortunate. That's not what he has said. He has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. What then should we say? Look at verse 6. So that we may boldly say, because of what he has said, I'm going to adjust my language. Because of what he had said, I'm going to modify my language. Because of what he has said, I'm going to make my own utterance, my own declaration, line up with what he has said. But see, so that we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what man shall do unto me. 
he has said, so I will say. He has said, so I will say. He has said, so I will say. Bring them together. Match them together. And let what I will boldly say line up, agree with what he has said. If we will do that, that means to say only, always, what God has said about you. Let, let, let's try some verses of scripture. Remember, let your conversation be without covetousness. Say it another way. Let your conversation be without contradiction. Don't ever contradict God. God says, I'm with you. Don't say, I can't find him. It's not with me. Let your conversation be without contradiction. He has said, I will heal you. I don't think I will ever be healed. Hey, don't say that. Let your conversation be without contradiction. I will help you. Nobody ever helps me. There's no help. Don't say that. Let your conversation be without contradiction. And say only what God has said concerning you. Let's come now to, you know, some verses of scripture. I'm looking at Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 12. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. Let your conversation, your declaration, your utterance line up with that. He has said, I will hasten my word to perform it. Then you will say, The Lord is about to work a miracle in my life. He will hasten his word and perform his promise in my life. Let your conversation, your declaration, let it match his word. We're looking at First Kings chapter 22. First Kings chapter 22. I'm reading here from verse 14. First Kings chapter 22, verse 14. In verse 14, and Micaiah said, as the Lord liveth, what the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. Make up your mind. What the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. I'm not sure of my life. Is that what the Lord has said to you? What the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. I failed before. And failure has always been following me. Is that what the Lord has said? What the Lord speaketh, says unto me, that will I speak. This holiness they are talking about, I don't know whether I will ever be holy. Because anybody walking in the place I work, anybody that finds himself, herself, in my situation, I don't know whether the fellow can ever be holy in his life. Is that what the Lord has said unto you? What the Lord says unto me, that will I speak. I've been praying for this uh, healing, I don't know how long, and it's always eluding me. As I'm about to catch it, then it's gone. And I'm as sick as ever. Is that what the Lord has said? Make up your mind. The declaration in God's miracle working promises only say always say what the Lord has said Micaiah said as the Lord liveth if your God is still alive as the Lord liveth if, his, if your God is not dead as the Lord liveth if your God is still on the throne as the Lord liveth 
if the all possibilities with God all things are possible if that is still true as the Lord liveth if his word will never fail if heaven and earth shall pass away but his word shall never pass away as the Lord liveth if you know the Lord is still alive here is how to change your conversation this is how to modify your conversation and this is how to make your utterance as the Lord liveth whatever the Lord says unto me that will I speak you know that will change a lot of things in your life I said it will change a lot of things in your life point number three the dominion of God's miracle working people the dominion of God's miracle working people God's people have dominion I say God's people have dominion and you'll have dominion in Jesus name Judges chapter 5 Judges chapter 5 we're reading from verse 13 dominion 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 the dominion of God's miracle working people we're looking at Judges chapter 5 verse 13 then he made him that remaineth have dominion over the nobles among the people. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty. The Lord made who me have dominion over the mighty. Barak was afraid, but Deborah was not afraid. Thank God for women of faith. I say thank God for women of faith. You'll be such a woman in Jesus' name. Here was battle. Here was conflict. Here was warfare. And then Deborah called Barak and said, Go and choose 10,000 of the armies of the armies of the children of Israel. And then follow after Sisera. And then Barak said, I cannot go except you go with me. And she said, I will go with you. He was afraid, but she was not afraid. You will not be afraid. And eventually they had dominion. Barak had dominion, Deborah had dominion, Israel had dominion, the whole people of God had dominion, like we have dominion already. I say like we have dominion already. The Lord made me have dominion over the mighty wake up in the morning and then instead of saying I don't know what's going to happen today I'm going to the office today I don't know what they will do again I'm going for that appointment I don't know how they how they will look and then even their look alone can shut you down instead of saying that you say over and over praise the Lord I'm going out today and the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty and then as you are stepping into that hall of interview praise the lord the lord made me have dominion over the mighty and when you are before them and they are putting the questions before you and some of the questions you don't know you are going to answer internally inside you, you are repeating the lord made me have dominion over the mighty after the interview you come out and you smile and whatever happened during that you say praise the lord the lord made me have dominion over the mighty and when you are going back home tomorrow you say praise the Lord the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty as you step in your house tomorrow and then those people they are waiting for you they think they are going to cause trouble again but they don't know that new power has come a new authority has come a new energy has come as you are stepping into your house tomorrow you say praise the Lord tell me the Lord made me have dominion over the mighty you will subdue all your enemies in Jesus name dominion dominion it makes us to have dominion i have dominion already i said i have dominion already we're looking at psalm 8 verse 6 psalm 8 verse 6 in psalm 8 verse 6 here is what it says thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hand that's how god made us he gave us authority he gave us dominion to subdue 
every power that may come against our lives thou made us seem to have dominion over the works of thy hand thou hast put all things under his feet confess that say that declare that affirm that in your life all those things are under my feet sickness under my feet affliction under my feet you are saying amen for me you are not repeating for yourself i said sickness under my feet say your own and affliction under my feet say your own demons under my feet say your own attacks under my feet say your own yokes under my feet say your own curses under my feet say your own he has given you dominion you will have dominion in jesus name dominion I said dominion. I said dominion. Romans chapter 6 verse 14. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 14. Romans chapter 6. We're looking at verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you. For Satan shall not have dominion over you. Sickness shall not have dominion over you. The world will not have dominion over you. Occultic power will not have dominion over you. Any human being on this terrestrial soil will not have dominion over you in Jesus' name. Sin and all the consequences of sin will not have dominion over you. If you say so, it is so. I said if you say so, it is so. If you affirm it in your life, it is so in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. First John chapter 4 verse 4. You know, uh, Elisha woke up in the morning and his servant woke up. And his servant saw all the Syrians in their chariots. Chariots of horses and chariots of fire. They surrounded Elisha. And, uh, but Elisha was relaxed. And the servant was thinking, ah, Elisha has not seen what I've seen. No, the servant had not seen what Elisha had seen. And because, you know, that man, when they were doing quiet time devotion, Elisha and his servant, they talk positive. God is on our side. Evil will never overcome us. We have dominion. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. But now the man woke up in the morning. And now he forgot everything he said in the, in the devotion. And then Saul, those are serious. Say, yeah, alas, my master, what shall we do? And the Lord, and Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see what I see. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. And you will see what your master Jesus is seeing in Jesus' name. You know, if every time you wake up, every time you have any challenge, every time you have a problem, if the Lord will open your eyes to see what your master Jesus, Elisha is not your master, Elijah is not your master, Joshua is not your master, Jesus is your master. And if, you, if the Lord will open your eyes and you will see what your master Jesus is seeing, there will never be any fear in your heart anymore in Jesus' name. And then the Lord opened the eyes of the servant of Elisha and he saw all the mountains, everything filled with the chariots of fire. And then all, then all the fears went away immediately. When God opens your eyes to see what you ought to see, there will be no fear of Satan, no fear of sin, no fear of demon, no fear of calamity in your life anymore. You are secured forever in Jesus' name. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Ye, ye of God little children and have overcome them because Greater is he, greater is he, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you have dominion? Do you have victory? From now on, the Lord has made us and called us conquerors and conquerors we are. He has made us more than conquerors, more than conquerors we are. He has made us overcomers, overcomers we are in Jesus' name. He has made us victors, victors we are in Jesus' name. He has made us 
partners with Christ, joint heirs with Christ, co heirs with Christ, partners, joint heirs, and co heirs with Christ, we are in Jesus' name. He has made us ministers of the new covenant, and He has made us laborers with God. Ministers and laborers with God are we in Jesus' name. He has made us kings and priests in the Lord. Look at Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 5. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness, and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and he has made us and has made us and has made us kings and priests unto God his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen he has made us kings and priests and kings and priests are we in Jesus name any king here today? Any queen there today? What are they? Kings? Queens? That is who you are. And that is the authority you are going to manifest in Jesus' name. While your hands are up, uh, you put your hands down. Are the kings still there? Are the queens still there? Okay. Well, the other hand, open Ecclesiastes. I'm talking about you now. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, chapter 8, verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who can who may say unto him, What doest thou? Power in your life, authority in your life, victors you are, conquerors you are. More than conquerors you are, kings you are, and your word will never fall to the ground. Rise up and confirm it. Rise up and confirm it. Your words are mighty. Your words will be powerful. That's what the Lord has made you. You didn't make yourself that. That's what the Lord has made you. And it is so. Open your mouth and pray. What a wonderful deliverance. What a wonderful declaration. Declare only what the Lord has said concerning you. Let your conversation be without contradiction. Don't contradict God. Don't contradict Christ. Don't contradict the promises of God. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God having dominion said, You know, from this very day, your life will never be the same again. What you say with your mouth will agree with the promises of God. And that will release power in your life in Jesus' name. New language. New life. New expectations. New miracles. New achievement. New heights every day. Miracle. Testimonies. Multiple testimonies in your life in Jesus' name. If the kings are still there, show me you are a king. Where are you? King, queen, king, queen, king and queen. Where are you? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the clarity of your word. We thank you for the power in your word. We thank you for the confidence, the confirmation of your word. We thank you for the assurance you have given us. Lord, I pray for every brother. I pray for every sister. I pray that all the failures of the past will be forgotten in Jesus' name. 
I pray that all these words we have heard, what's of power, what's of promise, what's of prophecy, I pray there will be a fulfillment in every life in Jesus' name. Cancel the weakness of the past. Cancel the fears of the past. Cancel all the afflictions of the past. Any sickness that is stubborn in any life, in any body there, I command you sickness. I speak the word of authority. Come out in Jesus' name. And all the doubts and all the unbelief and all the wavering and all the shaking, I command everything come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that every one of us will stand on the solid word, the immovable word of the Lord in Jesus' name. The power of the Lord be with you. The glory of the Lord shine upon you. The goodness of the Lord overflow in your life. And all the enemies be scattered before you. Anywhere you go, no man shall be able to stand before you. From day to day and week to week and month to month, yours will be the victory in Jesus' name. Everyone, you rise up to what the Lord has called you. Conquerors, more than conquerors, overcomers, victors, deliverers, champions, heroes of faith. Kings and priests, laborers of the Lord, co heirs and joint heirs, you will be with Jesus in Jesus' name. I pray that the miracle of power of God will continue to flow in your life. You'll never see lack, never see limitation, never see loss in your life. From now till you see Jesus face to face. You'll be growing from faith to faith and glory to glory and from blessing to blessing in Jesus' name. Be another man than you were yesterday. Be another woman than you were yesterday. Go forth, live in new power. We well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.